Good morning, everyone. Um, hi, my name is Alain Lefebvre. I'm the coordinator of the Mentoring and Coaching Hub uh, based in Oslo. I would like to welcome you all. It's a huge pleasure uh, to have you with us on this event. Uh, and it seems we have had more than 100 people uh, registering uh, and a lot being present today. So it's already a huge success. Uh, we have four presenters for you today, uh, and I will let them introduce themselves now. And we'll start by Dr. Jolly Haddock Miller. Jolly? Morning, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us. Um, so, as, as Alan's mentioned, I'm Dr. Julie Haddock Miller. I am leading on the research project. I'm a consultant, an academic, and a mentoring coaching practitioner. And I've been working with the MC Hub for about two years now. Uh, with the mentoring program in particular. Um, and I'm Holly Bennett. Uh, I'm the Evaluation and Capitalization Manager for the Mentoring and Coaching Hub. Hi, I'm uh, Neil Kay. I'm a research associate working with Julie to uh, conduct this research on behalf of MC Hub, um, mainly around the survey and helping out with the survey of mentees and mentors. Thanks to all of you. Uh, a short comment. If you see on the right side of, of your window, you have uh, the opportunity to chat and also Q&A. Um, if, if you want, you can just write and send to us the questions and we will answer uh, at the end of, the, of, of this webinar if it's okay for you. Right. And Thank Julie? I can see, thanks, Anna. I can see that a couple of you are saying that um, you can't hear sound. Um, so there's a couple of options. If you look at the top of your right screen, uh, the right hand side of your screen, you'll see um, what looks like a microphone, which may say off and you can click on. Um, so I don't know whether some of you can see that because that looks like there's three or four of you that, that don't have any sound at the moment. Yep. Do you want to just try that moment? Um, as we're keen for all of you to hear, obviously. Um, so James, perhaps if you can let us know if you can hear and and Tamara. Ah, uh, great, Yasmin, you're fine though, are you? Super. And then perhaps James and um, Tamara, can you let us know if you're able to hear now? Or perhaps um, Holly can just um, type something in, in the comment box to, to, to just check. Uh, okay, so some of it might be connection issues perhaps. Um, well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll carry on. Um, we are recording the webinar, I believe, so we'll Link to the webinar afterwards for those of you that are having some sound issues or perhaps some, some connection issues um, and we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. So the main the main thrust of, of um, this morning is really to provide you with an update of where we are with the research project. Um, and so it's primarily information giving, but we will leave some time at the end for the Q&A. Um, so we'll try and leave 10 to 15 minutes. Would like to give you a, a, a brief introduction into the, the context of the research um, and then we'll briefly outline the research objectives in addition to the MC Hub mentoring program objectives and all of that will become clear shortly. And then we'll give you a brief outline of the methodology um, and then the participant engagement, so who actually engaged with the research and how we got such great um, engagement figures, which Holly will talk us through. We'll have a look at the profile of the participants and Neil will talk us through that. And then the, 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 the lion's share really of the, the presentation is around the impact um, of the mentoring program on mentees, mentors, the mission and MSF more broadly. So there's quite a few slides there which we'll try and summarise for you. And then we're going to look at the emerging areas for improvement. So what is it the participants say um, could be improved and developed in relation to the mentoring programme and perhaps more broadly. And we'll briefly outline phase two of the research. So Alan's just going to give us a brief overview of, of the, the, the context for the research and why this was commissioned. Yes, so, yes. Um, so um, September 2017, there's a Nico now. <laughs> In 2017, we, we commissioned uh, we commissioned a two-year impact study of how mentoring supports the personal MSF, uh, and 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 more broadly, we wanted to contribute to the strategic priorities of the MC Hub. The intention 
is is really to um to be able to to learn on what we're doing uh, i think mentoring is is a is an old activity now in msf it's been starting in 2007 and 2009 and 2011 by ocb we it, it's a great opportunity now to know really what is the impact of mentoring on individuals mentees and mentors but also on the organization so that's that's really a uh, a key even for the hub and for MSF to really understand what we're doing and what is the impact. Lovely, thank you, Alan. Um, so if we look then specifically at the research objectives, um, so obviously there's, there's two key research objectives. So the first was understanding and evaluating the impact of the mentoring programme on both mentees, mentors and key staff. Obviously, here in terms of defining key stakeholders, that might be much broader in terms of um, the OCs, the partner sections and other individuals within the organisation itself. And the second area is to to look at and to evaluate to what extent is the mentoring programme actually delivering the objectives that Alan has just outlined for us. So in terms of defining those objectives for the programme, to what extent is the programme actually delivering on those objectives? So in a sense, those were the two overarching research objectives, although within, I think there are, and Alan would agree, that there's many sub-objectives within the framework, but they're, they're the two overarching objectives. It, it's also interesting to look at what well, were the very specific objective of the main the main objective of the program when it was designed, uh, and also the specific objectives. On that note, what you see on this slide have actually been reviewed in 2014, as we did a, a preliminary evaluation of the pilot phase when we ran the program for 2012 to 2014. So then we defined the objective as as it is here to support personal and professional development of MSF field managers and contribute in mobilizing their full capacity for the benefit of the organization and those MCOP seeks to assist. Uh, so, and then and then I remember where, when we were doing some, some modification on the specific one, also including the concept of uh, supporting mentees in building their own resilience capacity. Then something that is also important that we have developed through the, uh, the OCB mentoring program is, 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 a, is a specific mentoring approach. As you can see on the slide is, is we think that uh, mentoring can really uh, have an impact on, on, these, on these three uh, part of uh, slice of the pie, um, which is the ventilation and the reflection, and also indeed the development of, of transversal competencies. Julie? Thank you, Alan. So if we look at the, the methodology now, so the approach that we took, it's it's a, a two-year project. So we started back in September 2017, and those of you that are participants will be aware of that. And we're due to finish uh, May 2019. So um, you know, coming up to two years, and it's split into two phases. So it's a longitudinal project, which is what we see on the left. Phase one. Um, which started in September, we completed uh, last month. So that's very recent. So we're just sharing with you, hot off the press, just the the, um, the recent findings from phase one. Um, phase two will be starting in September this year, so very, very shortly. And then that will close um, between, well, it'll be February time, actually, but in terms of writing everything up and publishing, it will be towards um, May next year, so the same period as this year. And I, I suppose there are three stages to the methodology. So the first is that we sent out an online survey to both mentees and mentors that had participated in the program since 2014. And that was a, a really key time, as Alan's outlined, in terms of establishing the mentoring program objectives. The second is that we also invited um, participants to take part in a one to one interview. So that was mentees, mentors um, and a number of key stakeholders, such as development advisors, um, career managers, although no titles have changed recently. And the third was that we invited um, the participants to uh, design or to send a visual metaphor, so a visual picture, which we'll see shortly, of what they felt was the impact of mentoring. We'll see some examples of that in the findings shortly. So 
Thank you, Julie. And over to Molly. Okay, so through the design process, approach mentors and mentees who had relationships from 2014 onwards. So our participants had either completed relationships or were in a current relationship. So overall, we invited 96 mentees and 43 mentors. Uh, we sent individual invites to the mentees and mentors, along with a periodical reminder emails in order to try and maximize their engagement in the process. So everyone was invited to participate in a survey, interview, and then also provide the visual that Julie just mentioned. So we were really, really pleased with getting, you know, 26 mentees to participate and 21 mentors, um, including 40 match pairs, which is a really great snapshot of the mentoring program to date. Hi, can you hear me? So um, as Holly has said, this is a really good kind of um, response rate for this kind of research. So we've got uh, a lot of useful information. And if I just want to um, pick up on a couple of things about the, the sample profile, uh, and this is of, of people who filled in the survey. Uh, and uh, as you'll have seen, most of the, um, everyone who uh, took part in an interview and was asked for a visual metaphor, they also completed the survey. And so they're a kind of subset of the people who, uh, who answered the survey. If we look at the mentees who answered the survey, we had a 50-50 a uh, gender balance, so 50% female, 50% male. And on the whole, most of them were, were in the younger age range, you know, half were aged 25 to 34, uh, and with less than uh, five years experience with uh, MSF. If we look at the mentors, uh, by contrast, you know, there's a much uh, higher percentage who were male compared to female and they tended to be in the older age range you know 60 uh, 62 percent uh, aged uh, 45 or over and a lot lot more experience as can be as to be expected uh, you know um, more than three quarters were had more than uh, 10 years experience working working with MSF Lovely. Thank you, Neil. So what we have now is a series of slides which present the early findings. So that's the phase one findings of the impact of mentoring. Mentors and the impact of mentoring on the missions and perhaps MSF more broadly. So we, we divided really the, the research and the themes into these different areas. Um, because as, as we know, for those of you that are engaged in mentoring, I know a lot of you um, here on the, the webinar are, um, there's huge value in mentoring for all participants, whether that's mentees, mentors, or those that are involved at, at a program level. So we're interested in those different perspectives, those different lenses. So the slides we're going to see next really report on the findings of phase one through those different lenses, those different perspectives. So the first few slides I'm going to show you are about the impact on mentees. Now, as you can imagine, with the number of interviews that were conducted and the surveys, there's a huge amount of data that we have. Um, so what we're giving you here is just a very, very small selection of some of the key highlights that we have from the report. Now, if we look at one of the first themes that emerged for mentees, and this is perhaps one of the most significant um, it's really self-esteem. And what we can see in the banner at the top of that um, PowerPoint slide is the theme. So we see that in the banner there, self-esteem. On the left-hand side, we see a box where that's described in a little bit more detail. In the middle of the slide, we have a visual that was provided by a mentee. So one of our mentees that participated um, in the interview provided that visual. On the right-hand side, we have a quotation from a mentee. And actually this quotation, in fact, accompanies the picture. So this quotation came directly with the picture. Um, the banner underneath is one of the survey questions or one of the survey statements. So that's one of the survey statements or a survey question. And the percentage in the circle is the number of, of um, survey respondents um, that agreed with that statement or that question. So that's how these, these next set of slides are set up. It's the same format threat. So we see the theme at the top, a bit more detail on the left, 
the visual provided by the mentees or mentors in the middle there, um, the quotation on the right, and then the survey question or statement at the bottom with the percentage. So in terms of self-esteem, so what, what, what do mentees mean? So they talk about their increased confidence, their increased sense of empowerment, um, and they really report it on being the most beneficial aspects of the mentoring relationship and the program itself is this increased personal confidence, increased self-esteem. Um, and if we see the quotation there and the cat to the lion, the mentee says, empowerment to, to see me as a lion, not a cat, the belief on myself that I'm able to accomplish what I'm assigned to do. Um, and overwhelmingly, you know, the mentors talk about this in a lot of the men mentees and the mentors talk about this in a lot of detail in their paired interviews. And, and a, another example of a quotation that I really liked is a mentee said, and this mentee was a first time field coordinator, said, when I arrived, probably I felt 85 percent I couldn't do the job of a field coordinator. Now that I've experienced my mentoring relationship in the programme, and I'm almost at the end of my mission, I would say it's the other way around. So 85%, I feel that I can now do the job of a field co coordinator. I'm confident um, I have the, the self-esteem that I need to do the role. So by far, that was one of the most significant impact for mentees. And that was seen nearly unanimously across all of the interviews. So the next slide follows the same format. Um, so we've got the same format, the theme at the top there in terms of enhancing mentees performance and on the left hand side, a bit more detail that for a lot of mentees. And we see this in the visual mentoring enables them to unravel their thoughts and feelings, interpret their thoughts and feelings. And the consequence of this, which we see from a quote on the right hand side, is that mentors can help the mentee interpret events which can reduce stress levels because it provides a level of reassurance, a level of calm, a level of understanding. And as a consequence of that, if we look at the survey statement at the bottom, mentoring increases mentees' ability to perform effectively in the role because mentors are able to help mentees unravel, interpret their thoughts and feelings, which reduces stress levels, provides reassurance, and enables them to really perform within their role. Um, and you can see it's a significant percentage there. So nearly half of the mentees felt that that was one of the significant impacts of mentoring. Now, if we look at resilience, now we saw earlier on from the slide that Alan presented that actually resilience is a key objective of the mentoring program. It's important that we looked at this in particular in the mentoring research. So again, we see the key theme of resilience at the top there. And on the left hand side, um, mentees, mentees felt that the mentoring relationship in the programme really positively impacted on their ability to bounce back and cope with challenges. And for all of you that have been in the field, which I'm sure is many, if not all, you'll know that there are many, many challenges and uh, an individual's ability to cope is really paramount in in fulfilling the role and, and, and staying with the mission. And I think the visual in the middle that was provided by a mentee really captures that. This feeling at some point in the relationship or towards the end that when when the mentee first goes on the mission, they feel that they, they just can't do it. They're not able to do it. They can't do the role. But actually through the mentoring experience, as they work through the mission, that feeling changes to, I can do it. And that is a huge impact. The feeling at the beginning of the mission of I can't do it. And for some, actually, I want to go home to I can do it is, is huge. And on the right hand side, we see a quotation from a mentee where a mentee says mentoring relationships represent strength and of overcoming difficulties at an intense pace. And I'm sure for many of the webinar today, you'll have experienced that intense pace in the field and how that's very difficult to cope with for your first time in a new role. And if we look at the survey question, 
that mentoring increased the mentee's ability to adapt, bounce back and cope with the challenges in the field, half of the mentees felt, felt that mentoring enabled them to do that, which is a really significant finding of the research. Now, if we look at the next theme here, so the next theme about um, reflection, so reflecting back, learning from the past. Uh, so mentees felt that this was absolutely crucial in them succeeding in their role um, and working within MSF. And we see some really nice, a really nice quotation and a visual there. But first of all, on the left hand side, what we see is we see a bit more detail around reflection. So that mentees felt that mentoring positively impacts on mentees ability to understand context and culture and learning from the past. And obviously what mentors represent is mentors represent the role model, the person of experience, someone that's been there. They've they've worked in that culture. They've worked in that context. The culture um, with their mentee. And we see that really lovely visual there of Obama and the quotation. So Ob Obama represents the mentee and took time to learn the job. He looked at former presidents to gain their experience, their knowledge and their advice. So here, the former presidents obviously represent the mentors. The presidents and the mentors have the experience, they have the knowledge, they have advice. So they really represent the ro role model and the mentee is very much willing to learn from them, to learn about the context and the culture. And a number of mentees really felt that MSF has a very unique culture. And having worked with other humanitarian organisations, um, government bodies, NGOs, you know, MSF is, is very different to many of those. So it does have a unique context, a unique culture, um, or certainly culture, that is. And so that was really important. Um, which really came across in the interviews as well. Um, so that was a, a really, really strong, strong point that came across. Now, the final theme for mentees, and I've just picked th five, although there are many themes, there are many themes, but I've picked five here, um, as we've only got an hour for the call with Q&A as well, is self-awareness. So we see the theme on the top, the top there, the top band, self-awareness. And in terms of the detail on the left, that mentoring positively impacts on mentee's ability to see and understand their development areas. And that's really key. So, yes, the mentee go, starts the mentoring relationship with a development plan. They've already identified perhaps some areas that they want to develop. But often when they get to the field, that can change. You know, the circumstances are very different to what they expect the culture, the context might be different to what they expect. So therefore their development areas may differ and the mentor really helps them to understand that. And here we see a lovely quotation in a landscape and I'll talk about the landscape in a moment. But the quotation of the mentor helped me to identify areas to focus on improvement and finding constructive ways to address these issues. So mentors don't simply help mentees to identify areas for improvement, but they're finding ways to address issues that they may have and to address their development needs, to find solutions, which is really key. And some of you might recognize the landscape that we have in the picture there, and that's um, the landscape of London. And what we see there is we see a lot of, you know, obviously that we see a bridge, we see the architecture, we see some unfinished architecture. And for the mentee, what this represented is, is the bridge, you know, is, is the mentor providing the, the bridge, the support, but the, the complete buildings are the areas where perhaps the mentee feels comfortable. And what we find is the buildings that are under construction, those that are incomplete, are the development areas that the mentee needs to address and needs to work on. So they're the areas that are under construction. Um, and that's that's represented really wonderfully in this this visual. And then underneath what we see is one of the survey statements um, and the number of mentees that agreed with that. So mentoring helped the most 
with the development of people management and leadership competence. So the areas where mentors help their mentees the most was in HR, people management and leadership. And 68% of mentees felt that they were the areas where, where mentors really helped them the most in terms of that competence development. And that's really key because we've seen from Alan in the objectives that one of the objectives of the mentoring program is to support the mentees in the development of their objectives, their competencies and their objectives. Now, moving on to mentors, uh, again, I've picked five themes here for mentors. And what we can see here at the top is the theme. So the theme of mutual learning. And we see on the left there that what that means is that for mentors, they experience a positive impact through the mutual learning that they experience. So there isn't simply the learning for mentees, but mentors are learning through the relationship as well. And we see that uh, we see that really wonderfully in the visual here that we have with representing both the mentee and the mentor and this idea of reciprocal learning. And some might say reverse mentoring in a sense that the mentor, perhaps the role model, the experienced individual is learning from the less experienced individual in, in their role. But certainly, I think the picture demonstrates the reciprocal learning. And if we if we look at the quotation here, so when the relationship has reached its peak, I believe mentoring can work even more both ways with amazing benefits and learnings. So a really, really super quotation that really depicts that, that visual there. And if we look at the survey statement, um, mentors adopted the role of listener most in their mentoring relationship. So 89.5% um, of mentors, ment mentees felt that, 90% felt that this was the role they adopted most. And obviously, you know, we could argue that we learn the most through listening and through experience. Uh, and we know that mentors adopt very many roles and there'll be more of that in phase two. So we'll have more about the different roles that mentors adopt. But a key role for a mentor is listener. And if we think back to the slide that Alan presented towards the beginning with the, the, the PIES and the, the MSF MC have approached to mentoring, one of the key aspects is to allow the mentee to ventilate. And through that ventilation process, the mentor is listening throughout in that ventilation process. So that's really key. The next theme is reflection. So a key theme for the mentor um, in terms of impact is their ability to reflect. Um, and what does that mean? So what does that mean when we say the theme of reflection? So on the left, we see that mentoring can positively impact on the mentor's ability to reflect and appreciate different perspectives. So here again, we see this idea of reciprocal learning, that the mentor is appreciating different perspectives. And we see the mirror in the middle there, in the visual of this reflection. And the quotation that the mirror is a metaphor for the mentee, it makes me reflect on me, my own practice in the same position. The mentee is doing things in a different way. So the mentor is learning from that, that process, the mentee, doing things in a different way. And here in terms of the survey question, um, the statement that the mentor felt that responsibility was shared in their relationship throughout which enhanced learning. So 45 mentors, 45% of mentors, sorry, felt that the, the responsibility was shared throughout, which enabled them to also develop and enhance their learning. So the next theme is impact on mentors is their increased knowledge. So the increased knowledge of the mentors um, and that mentoring positively impacts on the mentor's ability to utilize their strengths to help others in MSF. So very much uh, a lot of mentors felt that their role was to help and support others within MSF. Um, and that's really, really critical, I think, um, is this feeling of wanting to help and support others, which is very much about the ethos of, of MFS and the culture of, of MSF. And we see in the middle there the, the picture of the sailing boat and the crew and working together as a team. And what we see there in the quotation is that most important is to use each other's strengths and knowledge to win the race together as a team. And this feeling that so much more can be accomplished 
by working together, by using our, our, our joint knowledge and our strengths and working together as a team that we can accomplish so much more. And it's great to see that 100% of mentors that completed the survey also felt very or somewhat satisfied with their mentoring relationship. So uh, really, really super statistic there as well. Now, the next theme, if this is this overarching theme of development, say professional development, and for the mentor, they felt that mentoring positively impacts on their ability to utilize their people development skills. So very much mentoring rather like coaching and, and, and other um, learning and development interventions is very much one of your people development skills. Um, it's very much within within the context of HR, people development, and is a core skill. And by mentors participating in the mentoring programme, it enables you or them to develop their, their skills. And here we see a lovely visual of a mentor lending a hand to a mentee. And that the mentor says, I see my role as supporting the mentee to the top level he or she wants to develop into. So it's not only about the mentor's development and their people development skills, but it's actually about giving a hand to others and supporting them. And here in terms of the survey statement at the bottom, we see that mentoring helped most with the improvement of people management and development competencies, which 55% of mentors agreed with. Now, again, more on development. So I've, I've kept with the same theme here, but now actually um, we move to more of a broader team, team development theme. So that here, mentoring positively impacts on mentors, team working opportunities and a feeling of camaraderie. And I think within MSF, that's such a strong, strong feeling and attribute, this feeling of camaraderie. And that here in the visual, we see this and the quotation that we're all in it together rather than alone. So actually through the mentoring program, people feel that they're in it together, they're not alone. Uh, they have someone to support them and to help them. And by doing that, it then enables them to help and support their teams in the field. And that 46% of mentors felt that mentoring helps to develop, sorry, 56% felt that mentoring helps to develop teamwork and cooperation, which obviously is really key within MSF and within the context of uh, a mission. Now, here we move on to the broader context. So what's the broader context in terms of the benefits for and the impact on the mission and for MSF? And one of the first themes is, is the idea of shared learning within the mission and within MSF. And how on the left we see that mentoring positively impacts on development, providing a shared learning experience for all. So very much within the mission and within MSF, mentoring really is a vehicle to enhance shared learning and to learn from one another. And in the visual, we see two people working together. So the image shows our joint effort, our joint vision to bridge the two backgrounds or worlds through mentoring. So mentoring can provide that bridge of culture, of context and provide their sh that shared experience. And we've already seen um, that both for mentors and mentees, uh, unanimously people felt satisfied or at least somewhat satisfied with their mentoring relationship. The next impact um, more broadly around empowerment. Um, and that mentoring positively impacts on women's sense of empowerment. So we did look at particular aspects within the research. And one aspect of interest was actually um, support for women in the field. Um, and here we see a, a visual um, which represents the picture represents women empowerment. And again, what we see here in terms of the survey is that 56 percent of mentees felt that increasing personal confidence and self-esteem um, resulted in the courage to challenge and to be heard. And for a lot of mentees, if not all, it was very important to, to have a voice and to be heard and to have the courage to challenge others and, and challenge in you know, a positive, in a supportive way. Um, but actually that comes down to having 
confidence and the self-esteem to do that. So by mentoring, providing the confidence and enhancing the self-esteem meant that then individuals were able to have the courage to challenge, to find a voice and to be heard, which is so, so important within the context of the role within the field. The next theme, really key as one of the research objectives and also one of the mentoring program objectives is resilience. And here we've already seen that mentoring positively impacts on mentees' ability to cope and ultimately complete their mission. So being able to cope is, is really important and complete the mission, obviously. And retention is one of the uh, key objectives of the programme. And here in the visual, we see that mentoring provides a safe haven where people are able to just stop, to take a breath, uh, take a step back and just have a moment of calm. And so the mentoring relationship very much provides a moment of calm in situations which sometimes are not. And so what we see with this quotation from a mentee with the picture is this picture reflects my feelings with my mentor, rest in chaos in my head. So the chaos in the head, but also sometimes the chaos in the environment. And so mentoring provides that safe haven, that space to do that, uh, which means that they're then able to cope. And for men, mentees, all mentees in the survey felt that the mentor's ability to challenge their thinking was the most important matching criteria for both for, for, for mentees when making a selection of their mentor. Now, I mentioned retention already just briefly in the previous slide. So a key theme is to what extent does mentoring positively impact on retention? So obviously, whether mentees um, stay on the mission that they're currently on or go back for a second mission or perhaps a third. So here on the left hand side, we see some more detail here of mentoring positively impacts on mentees, feelings of protection and their ability to walk in the shoes of a field manager. And by doing this, it then also impacts on their ability to complete the mission, which we had on the previous slide, and then potentially go on to a second mission. And here in the visual, we see this lovely visual. The walking stick can prevent you from falling, but it's you that needs to do the walking. So absolutely, the mentee in their role in the mission needs to do the walking, but the mentor provides some degree of support and some degree of protection. Now. If we look here, so we look at, again, one of the survey statements. So for mentees, 86% of mentees plan on continuing to work with MSF now or in the future. And for 79% of mentees, this has been influenced by their mentoring experience. So again, if we think about the mentoring program objectives in terms of retention, a really positive outcome here. But a couple more and then we're almost at the end and then we'll, we'll have we'll have time for Q&A. So here we see another theme around impacting positively on performance and here the left hand side. So positively impacting on the mentee's ability to perform in the role and complete their mission. And a mentee here comments that the mentor programme has been critical to my professional growth as a first mission coordinator. And that was also her first appointment within MSF within the organisation as well which is fairly unusual, I'm told. And for 65% of mentees, they felt that mentoring helped them in their role and field environment more than any other form of support. And that's a very significant finding at this stage, that 65% felt that mentoring was the most significant form of support um, for them in the field environment. OK, so we're on the last couple of slides and then we've got plenty of time for Q&A for myself and Alan and Holly and Neil. Uh, so obviously at this stage, we're looking at emerging areas for improvement. We won't actually report on formal recommendations until we've completed phase two. And we've looked at the data from both the, the first phase and the second phase and we've done a comparison. But there are three areas of um, current emerging areas from improvement, and we see those in the red boxes on the left hand side. So we can see there are some areas for improvement for the mentoring programme. There are some areas for continuing professional development and some areas for improvement for communication. And so I've grouped the emerging areas for improvement into those three overarching themes. 
Um, and because of timings, we want to finish at, at 10.45 to allow 15 minutes for Q&A. I'm just going to look at one, the one, one area for improvement for each of those three themes. So perhaps if we start, um, if we start at the bottom rather than the top, so work our way up, start at the bottom. So we've got the mentoring program. Now, as, as many of you will know, uh, the MC Hub currently engages with uh, mentoring, um, the coaching education program, uh, which involves one to one coaching and, and possibly team coaching as well and and team coaching in the field. So coaching teams, teams in the field. And we're currently engaged in a piece of research at the moment with that. So what the participants would like to see is they'd like to see greater alignment between the various support development support interventions that the MC Hub offer. So, for example, what some of the mentees have said is what they'd really like to do is when they finish their mission for their next mission, they would like to have a coach. So they'd like to have a one to one coach. Some of them have said, actually, I'd like to really engage with team coaching. I think team coaching would be very beneficial for teams in the field. And it would be really great if the leadership team could engage with team coaching that would support everybody. We've had some mentees that once they've experienced the mentoring programme have then on their next mission, they've got lots of other people involved and encourage them to have mentees, which is really super. Uh, some of the mentors are also part of the first coaching education cohort with the MC Hub, which is great. And the benefit of that is they're able to see the connection between mentoring and coaching and how the two can benefit individuals in the field. So that's really super. And some mentors are already practicing coaches in their own right. Um, so what they see is there's a great opportunity to align and to provide some synergy between all of the different developmental interventions here. So rather than seeing them you know, as separate strands, where can we see the linkages and the crossovers and the alignment that can help and support people in the field? Um, so that's obviously an emerging area for improvement. We'll look at that again in phase two and we'll come back and revisit all of these in phase two. Now, something under continuing prof professional development. Again, we've got three here. Um, they're all important. So these aren't in order of priority, by the way. They're all important. So here what we see is CPD for mentees and mentors. So for both mentees and mentors, they'd like to see CPD. And that can be in a variety of forms. Um, so it might be a community of practice for mentees, a community of practice for mentors. It might be an annual uh, conference, an annual get together, a workshop. Um, support for mentors that focuses on specific things such as supporting well-being, resilience, for example. So lots of opportunities there for CPD. And then if we look at communication, one of the big themes that came across was very much the sharing of data, the evidence of impact and the lessons learned. And also sharing with participants, you know, in terms of the the impact and lessons learned, what is it that the MC Hub and MSF more broadly as a movement, what is it that the organisation is going to do to really harness the learning and what changes will occur as a result of the investment in this research? Um, what changes will occur both in the MC Hub, the movement more broadly and in the field? So that's a really key area um, in terms of improvement. And the last slide. Uh, before we move on to Q&A and thanks, of course, is phase two. Very briefly, um, as I as I discussed at the start, we'll be repeating the the approach um, from September three to February, um, analysing the data, hopefully disseminating broadly the new knowledge that we've created and obviously acknowledging and thanking all of those involved and looking at what changes in practice there might be as a result of the research. And uh, moving on to, to Q&A. So we've got about uh, 15, 15 minutes for um, questions and answers. And, and that can be for any any of the four of us um, that are here today for the webinar. So whether that's myself or Alan, Holly and Neil, we're all here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, I haven't been tracking the questions on the right hand side. Hopefully Holly and Neil have been doing some of that for us. Uh, so you can type in a question. Um, and it might be that Holly and Neil have, have seen questions popping up that they might want to raise with us. 
but but thank you very much for this morning everybody and we're here for q a um if i just have a look now at the questions we've been asked um i think you covered a bit of what uh the first question that olivia has posted um so if olivia doesn't feel like we've answered that question then feel free he can just give us a poke and we can delve a bit deeper but if we look at patrice's yeah. question on how do we explain what it looks like like a gender imbalance among mentors and whether the mentees usually have a preference for a mentor of the same gender or the opposite gender or no preference yeah, that's a really good question. So, uh, and Neil might be able to comment more. So, because Neil's actually got the survey in front of him. But uh, what I would say is gender was not one of the preferences for overall. Overall, gender was not a preference for mentees or mentors. Because um, we had, a, as as many of you will know, we had a long list of um, you know, what was the criteria, matching criteria. So whether that, that was gender or role or experience or age, for example, uh, and gender didn't really feature as one of the important criteria. Um, in terms of the gender imbalance with um, mentors, yes, there's a much greater um, participation of male mentors than female. And it's interesting because I think that um, a lot of the participants would like to see more female ment mentors. Um, and that may be one of the recommendations. How MSF and MC Hub enables that to happen at this stage, I'm not sure. And it might be that Alan has a view on that um, as you know, he's sort of led on the programme. Um, and some of that might simply be historical um, in terms of the, the number of men and women in senior roles, such as head of mission, for example, within MSF. Yeah, just to add to that, um looking at the results of the survey, the uh, gender came up very, uh, was, was barely mentioned at all by anyone in terms of the matching process. Uh, and so uh, it, it appears to be something to do with the available pool of, of potential mentors rather than a, an active preference either on the part of the mentee or the mentor. Um, yeah, so just really kind of backing up that point that Julie mentions. And Alan, any thoughts about the, the current profile of mentors, yeah. men and females? Just confirming for the previous 100 and approximately 150 matching I did for mentees and mentors, when I asked the question about the preference based on gender, it was very rare that people were asking for a specific one. It was not, it was not something important. I don't know if there would be any new trend now linked to the Me Too movement and, and other things like that. I don't think we have evidence for that. Uh, related to the identity of the pool of mentors, from my perception and the last mentoring workshop have been facilitating, co-facilitating, it seems to be more and more balanced. Uh, mm. And I felt it was before. How, how is there a reason why mentors have been, female mentors have been responding less into that research? There could be some, some good reason. Uh, I don't know. I have the feeling it's really improving the, the, the balance and the diversity inside the pool of mentors on that note. Great, thank you. I don't know, Patrice, if we're answering your question. So there if we have a look third... now. Yeah. Oops, sorry. All right. Go ahead. Um, so if we have a look at Solvay's question, so are there any biases consider considered when reading the outcome? Yeah, so uh, biases in terms of the outcome of the the research, I presume you may mean there. It's a, yeah, I mean that's a difficult question because it's quite a you know it's quite the outcome because there are there are different lenses and there are so many different outcomes. I guess we're not looking at one outcome, although you could argue the impact. <laughs> How is that defined? Um, so, yeah, so. Yeah, um, I need to think about that one for a moment in terms of bias. In any research, there are always biases. I guess that's a starting point. So in any research, there are always biases. And what you try to do with research is really triangulate um, different methods so that you're cross-checking the views. So obviously, if you had a survey, a, a survey without the interview responses that can then delve into the detail of the survey response, um, then it's much more difficult to reduce bias. 
But hopefully by having you know, the three forms of, of data, so by having survey combined with then the follow up interviews, which are triangulated by match pairs. So we tried where we could to have match pair interviews so we can triangulate and compare the view of the mentee in that relationship with the view of the mentor in that relationship to see whether there's a degree of convergence or indeed whether there's, there's a degree of divergence there. And then to have the visuals that then, then demonstrate the key themes. What we're trying to do by that is triangulate, compare views, look for convergence or divergence. And then by doing that, then hopefully reduces some of the bias. Can we can we get remove all biases? I'm not sure we ever can with research. Would you agree, Neil? Oh, you're on mute, Neil. Hi. Uh yeah, I, I guess I would agree. I mean, doing as Judy says, any any research of this nature is 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 difficult mm. uh, in terms of removing all bias. I mean, you've just got to almost acknowledge that there will be some bias, and and you know this kind of uh, almost a social desirability bias that the you know how people will answer will will want to display themselves and you know, the best light possible. And so trying to get below that and, and trying to kind of dig a bit deeper and, and really probing, especially through the interviews in that case, uh, of examples of, of, of you know, the, the kind of evidence how how someone's, you know, thoughts and, and, and practice and experience have shaped how they, how they, how they are practicing going forward. So that's a way of kind of, you know, mitigating this kind of bias in, 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 uh, in participants' responses, um, you know, as researchers, we're also kind of, you know, aware that, you know, there, there will be a certain amount of bias uh, involved. Yeah, and I, and I do think that the combination of the match pair interviews um, with the survey and the visuals is, is probably the closest that you get yeah. Um, yeah. in terms of methodology to reducing bias. Um, but it's also the most time consuming as well by doing that. So that's the consequence. It's, uh, you know, a survey is much more straightforward, straightforward to analyse. The combination of the survey with match pair interviews and the visual is is the most uh, time consuming, but but it is um, the best way in which we can reduce any bias. Yeah. And I've seen a question. Now, it says it's from Alan, but obviously I know it's not because um, <laughs> I've just noticed that uh, a couple of people are called Alan. So several of you are very fortunate today called Alan. Um, and this is a question around how are people recruited to become a mentor, uh, which obviously isn't via Alan, but I think it might be a question for Alan. So how are, how are people recruited to become a mentor, Alan? Um, it, it depends from from the, the, the five six existing mentoring program in the movement. Uh, there's the, the, the recruitment is quite similar, but there, there might be some key uh, differences. So I don't know how much it's the right place to go in detail in, into the recruitment process. Very often mentors are, are, are identified and invited to apply, and there is a kind of a selection process in, in, in most of the of the five programs, including some interview and, and checking both that people have the requested experience and, and potential skills to become a, a mentor and, and then in some of the programs there is a steering committee or a working group uh, deciding together on validating uh, the mentors or not. I, I have to keep it short on that but I think we can invite you to contact us directly to, to check on the on the different processes. Uh, the question was from some people from OCA and I see that Richard has actually checked in and, and answered that <laughs> for them so I think maybe you can get in touch for that perspective but um, we just had a bit of a chat with Olivia in the uh, the private chat and we just want to ha have a look at, at his question which is um, so he was sort of discussing that we have a lot of positive outcomes and whether there's a field or a space where people of what they would have liked more what were they expecting that they didn't get just to understand where the potential um, areas for improvement are for the mentors and if being aware of that is is a factor. Yeah, I think that's a really interest. It's a really interesting question because with the, I do a lot of research around mentoring, um, and one of the questions that comes up quite regularly um, when I do present with webinars or presentations, which isn't specifically your question, but it's it, it's kind of moving in that direction, is um, 
what are the existing development needs for mentors? What are, what are the needs that haven't been met? So what are those needs that haven't been met as yet for both mentors and mentees? Um, and I can see that, oh, thank you, Olivia. He's popped, he's popped a, a little note up there with a mentee in whom I've seen such a potential. Oh, yeah. So, so what are the unmet needs of mentors and mentees? Um, where perhaps things haven't worked so well is perhaps why and what can be done about that? Um, what's sort of outstanding? Um, and perhaps if I go back to the, the previous slide in terms of areas for improvement. So, so the areas for improvement, these are really primarily what was suggested by both mentees and mentors. So yes, it's the analysis of the research, but it's primarily what was suggested by both mentees and mentors. So all of these have, have come from the data. They've come from either the survey or the interviews or from both. Um, and, you know, and mentors do still have some existing needs. Absolutely. So for some of you, um, you've been on the advanced workshop. So the second workshop for mentors. And I know there are some of you that would like to attend that that haven't yet. But also some of you would like to attend some specific training, specific workshops that are tailored towards the specific needs of the mentees. And I mentioned already about you know, well-being and resilience. Um, and those areas which have come out as quite a significant need of the mentees that sometimes mentors don't know really how to address that because perhaps we're moving into the territory of therapy or psychology or counselling and sometimes the lines are blurred sometimes the lines are blurred between therapy psychology counselling mentoring and coaching and so you know, potentially there's some work there to be done in understanding where those those lines are and those boundaries and what is the, the space in which you work in. So I think there's there's a number of areas, absolutely, and they broadly fall into these three categories here on the slide that we've presented. Um, but what I would say is obviously today, uh, we're coming to the end, I'm conscious, is that we have presented primarily the positive aspects of the impact of mentoring, naturally. But when we get to the, the phase two, what we'll be presenting is all aspects of um, the mentoring programme when we get to the findings for phase two. So here, the dissemination acknowledging we'll be presenting all aspects um, of the impact, whether it's positive, negative or indifferent um, in terms of the mentoring programme. But here, what we have presented is the most significant outcomes at this stage at the end of phase one. But there are many, many, many more themes and sub themes that we could present alongside this. It's really just a, a snapshot in time of, of where we are. I'm conscious we're one minute from the end. Um, we may have time for questions. Uh, Alan's looking at me with a smile. <laughs> uh, but what I did want to do is um, to really, on my behalf, is to say a huge thank you um, to those that have participated so far and volunteering their time. And um, for some of you, you've um, you've given up several hours already. And we're really grateful for the time that you've given. And hopefully we'll do the same for phase two. And a huge thank you to those mentees, mentors and individuals for their, for their insight and your honesty and contribution. Um, it's really, really fabulous. So a huge thank you from me. And and Alan, was there anything else from you? No, uh, to repeat what you said, thank you to everyone, to the, the three of you for the work you're doing on, on that piece of research, which is a two-year one. And I'm looking forward to the, uh, the final outcome next year. And a huge thanks to the participants, uh, the mentors, the mentees, uh, for taking the time and, and answering the questions, and also for the next, uh, for next year as, as they will continue to participate. And indeed, big thanks for, for all the participants who joined us today. And yeah, we, we got all your feedback on the tools, and we're going to work on that so that in, in future events, we make sure everyone has a good experience uh, of, of, of this kind of webinar. Thanks a lot to everyone again. Holly, I don't know if you want to say something, or Neil? Uh, just to say, just to reiterate my thanks as well. Thank you. Holly, Holly any last word? No? <laughs> Uh, yes, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's engaged in getting back to us and also for participating in the webinar today. Um, I know it's been a bit of a bumpy ride, but hopefully when we do the next one, it will run a lot more smoothly. <laughs>
And then finally, the, if you have any questions that you didn't send and you would like to send to us directly, please uh, do not hesitate. The discussion continues until the next presentation of the final research. We're glad to answer to your questions at any time regarding this interim report. Thanks a lot, everyone, and, uh, and we'll Thanks. stay in touch. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.